Don't miss Clint Walker in Night of the Grizzly, Thursday at 8 on KST Washington. This is Divorce Court, presided over by Judge William Keene. In the case we'll be seeing today, Mark Wheelwright is suing Marcia Wheelwright, his wife of two and a half years, for divorce on the grounds of mental and physical cruelty. Mrs. Wheelwright is countersuing on grounds of adultery and mental cruelty. All right, I call this case of Wheelwright versus Wheelwright. Is the plaintiff ready? Ready for the plaintiff, Your Honor. Is the defendant ready? Yes, I am, Your Honor. Mr. McNicholas, it's a pleasure to have you in my court again. Always a pleasure to be here, Your Honor. Do you want to make an opening statement? I do indeed. May I proceed? Yes. Your Honor, the plaintiff, my client, was a loving and generous husband whose wife took the expensive gifts that uh, he gave her and sold them for her use with her lover. My client asked for a divorce on the grounds of physical and mental cruelty. He asks for the 25-room home, the horse farm, and all the furnishings all worth approximately $4,500,000. Under the circumstances of this case, Your Honor, no spousal support to the defendant wife is in order. Thank you. Mr. Startland, it's always a pleasure to have you here in my court. Thank you, Your Honor. Do you want to make an opening statement? Yes, I do. Mrs. Wheelwright has been treated like an object by her miserly husband and his jealous children. Now, Mr. Wheelwright, a polo player, plays more than the horses. She, uh, excuse me, he uh, plays the field with women, too. He openly has a mistress. And we ask for a divorce today based on adultery and mental cruelty. We ask for a 65-35 division of marital assets, the horse ranch, and $5,000 per month spousal support. Thank you, Your Honor. Call your first witness, please. Plaintiff will call Mr. Wheelwright to the stand, Your Honor. Step forward, please. Now taking the stands, the plaintiff, Mark Wheelwright, a successful gallery owner and antique dealer. His wife accuses him of miserly behavior, although he's worth several million dollars. She also claims he's committed adultery with Doris Warwick, a wealthy heiress. I do. All right, Mr. McNicholas, let's proceed. Your Honor, we have here Exhibit 1 for identification, which I'd like to approach the bench and uh, show the witness. That's the premarital agreement? It is indeed, Your Honor. All right, you may. Thank you. Mr. Wheelwright, I hand you Exhibit 1 for identification. Ask if you can describe and identify that exhibit for the court, sir. Yes, the pre agreement that Marsh and I signed. We both agreed to full disclosure of any sexual liaisons for three years prior to the time we met. I also retained my property as uh, separate holdings. Did you ever have reason to amend that premarital agreement? At Marsh's insistence, we later amended the agreement, so the house and its furnishings became marital property. We also agreed that any violation of the agreement violated, invalidated rather, Marsh's claim to that property. Can you tell us why you decided upon the agreement in the first place? Yes. I thought it represented an even greater commitment between Marsh and me that we married for love, not money. In fact, I was always generous with her. For our first anniversary, I gave Marsha a triple strand of pearls. Very expensive. But I quickly learned that any gift to her meant not love, but only a desire for pricier things. And did you go along with her requests for pricier things, Mr. Wheeler? Yes. I was still so much in love that when she asked, I gave her two miniature paintings from my antique store that she admired. Then she started talking up things like a horse ranch, playing on my interest in polo. So? I bought a small ranch, although both my children suggested that I had married a gold digger. Did something happen to cause you to feel that perhaps you didn't appreciate these gifts? Oh, yes. One evening, we were with my friend Doris Warwick for a chamber music recital, and Marsha was wearing the pearls I had given her. But during a cello piece, the strand broke and pearls went flying all over the room. Several broken half on the tile floor, and I was amazed to see they were glass. Did you confront your wife with this information? Oh, yes, but she denied that they were fake. So I smashed one on purpose. Glass. She finally admitted that she had sold the real pearls. I began to wonder what she had done with the other gifts, so I checked. The paintings I gave her were gone. She couldn't produce them. Did you continue to buy your wife expensive gifts after that? No, certainly not. I wanted to share my soul with Marcia, but it became obvious that she was selling my tokens of devotion for hard, cruel cash. And when I refused her next request, she wouldn't have anything to do with me. She made sure the rest of my family was exposed to her nastiness. Did she continue to behave badly toward you and your family? Yes, yes, she told Toby and Tracy and my children from my previous marriage. 
She said, move out of our house and stop using our community property. And then she actually tried to cause me physical harm when she, when I didn't buy her a plane. She walked in the polo field and spooked my pony by waving her coat. And I was thrown, sprained her wrist and ankle. And she said, that's what you get for being such a miser. I wish it had been your head. Mr. Wheelwright, in spite of all of this, did you still make attempts and try to improve the relationship? Oh, yes. We went to France in the hopes of making a, a new start. We were at the theater one night when a lady rushed up to Marsha calling her Mrs. Lanthier and asking her about her husband, Norbert. When I demanded an explanation, Marsha admitted that she had lived in Paris with a man and that she lied when she signed the marital agreement. She has forfeited all claim on my property. She should not get one dime. No further questions, Your Honor. Ms. Norton, you may inquire. Yes, didn't Mrs. Wheelwright only ask for gifts from you so she could use them in charity fundraising auctions? She used my love for her to line her own pockets with gold. Didn't your wife have to sell her pearls because you were too cheap to give her a proper allowance? Cheap? I bought her a horse ranch, for God's sake. Wasn't that an investment you made for a tax write-off? It became a tax write-off because of her lavish spending once she got hold of it. You didn't... Didn't she become hostile every time your wife tried to be independent? No, no, she had complete freedom. And she repaid me by injuring me in every way possible. Didn't your injuries on the polo field result purely because you were on an unfamiliar mount? No. Marcia deliberately spooked my horse. <laughs> but didn't you send your wife home later that day so you could spend the night with your paramour, Doris Warwick? I was delivering two of Doris's ponies up north for a match and had to get up at 3 a.m. I never even saw my so-called paramour. Haven't you often spent the night at the Warwick Manor because you and Mrs. Warwick are continuing a love affair that started before your marriage? That's nonsense. I respect my marriage vows. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, you may step down. I want to see counsel on the bench, please. While Mr. Wheelwright leaves the stand, we have time for a short break. Yes, Your Honor? Is there any other amendment to this uh, premarital agreement from the one he's talked about? No, there's not. Your no, Your Honor. Hi. Hello. You, uh, use this in the machine? Will I? Wouldn't dare do this wash without it. Well, why do it at all? That sweater's brand new. Looks brand new. It's three years old. You're kidding. How about that blouse? Two years old. And this? Never mind. And they're machine washable. Sure. And I use, will I? Will you show me how to use it? Your machine or mine? <laughs> no matter whose machine you use, trust will I. Wouldn't you love a thick, rich chocolate mousse? Think you can't? Well, yes, you can. Introducing Weight Watchers Chocolate Mousse on a Stick. Only 35 calories that say... Yes, you can. What's the easiest way to top a salad with Velveeta? Try new Velveeta shreds. Finally, easy to use shreds of the great Velveeta taste no other shreds can match. That's new Velveeta shreds. Original or Mexican? I'm a professional corrections officer. I enjoy good paid job security and advancement opportunity. One call to corrections officer training company was all it took. I received eight weeks of excellent training and they even helped me find a job. Corrections officer training program is training today's finest corrections personnel for federal, state, and local institutions. It could be just what you're looking for. Call 1-800-228-0917 right now and ask for enrollment information. Hemingway, the lover. Oh, a life more turbulent. Sober up. More sensual. I love you. More passionate. You are the woman who shares my bed. Than any fiction. We used to make love. From stolen moments to carefree days. I'll meet you in Paris. From silent agonies to violent goodbyes. Somebody wants that on me! Nobody! Four remarkable wives. One legendary man. Stacy Keach is Hemingway. Tonight at 8. We return now to divorce court, about to testify in behalf of Mark Wheelwright is his 25-year-old son, Toby. I do. All right, let's continue. Did your stepmother ever demonstrate behavior that caused you to become suspicious of her motives for marrying your father? <laughs> yes. 
Whenever Marcia and I were alone in the house, she'd always ask questions about the furnishings and the paintings, always ending with, I wonder how much that is worth. <laughs> One night, the dining room was set up for dinner for 12, and she exclaimed, I bet if you added this all up, there's millions in here. Soon after that, she started really working on Dad. What do you mean, working on Dad? Well, she talked about nothing else besides that premarital agreement. She said that if the house and the furnishings weren't in both their names, she wasn't a real wife. She brought it up day and night, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. At my dad's annual client dinner, she walked around and exclaimed, I'm a guest here also, just like you people. Then she started crying. Did you ever see your stepmother cause any physical harm to your dad? Yes. <laughs> Dad, one afternoon, was showing us some new watercolors that he had bought. Marcia was on her third screwdriver by then, and she said that the only thing worse than bad art was a jerk foolish enough to pay good money for it. Then she flung her drink at my father, and the glass shattered. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Cross-examination. Yes, didn't that glass shatter when your father slapped it out of Mrs. Wheelwright's hand? I don't remember it that way. And weren't they arguing because your father was making a fuss over watercolors that were done by Doris Warwick? They were arguing because Marcia didn't like my father spending money on anything else but her. And don't you stand to lose nearly a million dollars should Marcia Wheelwright win this case? I have a very large trust fund. I am here testifying for my father, not myself. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, you may step down. The plaintiff rests, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Norton, call your first witness. Yes, I call Marsha Wheelwright to the stand. Step forward, please. Now taking the stand is the defendant, Marsha Wheelwright. Her husband claims that her avaricious nature has led her to convert gifts of love into cash. He also claims she has not lived up to the terms of the premarital agreement and therefore forfeits the marital assets. I do. All right, let me hear from the defendant. Yes, Mrs. Wheelwright, did you have any misgivings about signing the premarital agreement when you were married? Well, the sexual disclosures didn't bother me. It even sounded like a good idea, but it was the uh, separation of assets that seemed unnecessary. But I signed, and then Mark's financial concerns became downright cheapness. He, he made me turn over all my receipts to him like I was some employee on a company expense account. Were there things that your husband did that you had trouble living with? <sighs> yes. He tried to use money to control me. Sure, he gave me a wonderful little miniature painting, which may have had some value, but I couldn't use it to pay for a taxi or to, or to buy luncheon when I was in town shopping. And, and when I complained, he said, why should I shovel money at something that's already been bought and paid for? I never said such a kind of thing. All right, just a minute. Just be seated. I've heard from you. Let me hear from your wife. Let's go. Did this attitude bother you? Sure, I, I felt like a thing, like, like a possession. I even wanted to start up a little business so I could become more self-sufficient, but Mark refused to loan me any startup cash. So finally, just to get out of the house, I became involved in charity work. And I wanted to donate money as well as time, but of course I couldn't get Mr. Scrooge to donate a dime. How were you getting along with your husband's children at this, at this time? I wasn't, and it's not that I didn't try. But from the beginning, Toby and Tracy treated me like I was a, a leper. The very first time I met them, Toby said to me, you're not going to last six months if we can help it. That, that same night, I heard him telling his father that I'd asked to see bank statements, and I had never said anything of the sort. Mrs. Wheelwright, why did that woman in Paris identify you as Mrs. Lantier? Norbert Lantier and I became very good friends. Um, his daughter was marrying into a very proper French family and well Norbert is is bisexual and he's divorced and he was raising his daughter by himself so right before I returned to the States he asked me if I would pose as his wife during the marriage preparations of course Mark wouldn't believe that there was nothing between Norbert and me and and he said um, you're not the only one that can play the bed hopping game do you know what your husband meant by that <laughs> Oh, yes. After Mark heard about Norbert, he grabbed me by the hand and he dragged me out to Doris Warwick's chateau. And while there, he, he paid attention only to Doris. He would, he would kiss her and touch her when he knew I was watching. I, I became upset and I took the next train back to Paris. I, I headed there and all by myself. And did you really get to Paris? 
No. No, I, I kept thinking about how Mark was just trying to make me jealous. That uh, I should go back and try to make up and not run away like a child. So I took the first return train. Uh, when I got there, there was nobody around, so I wandered out to the stables. And I couldn't believe what I heard. What did you hear? <laughs> I heard Doris and Mark moaning and sighing. And then and, and Mark said... Here, rub some of this on. And, and Doris cried out, it, it doesn't get any better than this. They, they, they were disgusting. I was totally shocked. My husband really did have a secret life, and if he thinks he is going to lie his way out of this, he is wrong. He is dead wrong. No further questions, Your Honor. Cross-examination. Mrs. Wheelwright, wasn't the conversation that you overheard in the stables uh, actually uh, your husband, Mrs. Warwick, foaling a mare? Neither Doris nor Mark know anything about birthing a horse. Didn't you disappear after that for about two weeks? And weren't you living with uh, Norbert uh, in Paris, or Norbert? Mark knew exactly where I was because I phoned Doris' chateau and told him. It took him that long to come and see me. Wasn't it with great reluctance that your husband agreed to separate bedrooms, and wasn't that at your insistence? There were times when an old whiplash injury of me bothered me, and, and I had to sleep on a special mattress. Weren't you the one that urged your husband to take a mistress so you could, and I quote, stop faking orgasm? Oh, God. No, I had said that some Europeans had the right idea on that score. I didn't mean that we had to do it. You accuse your husband of controlling your life, and yet... He turned over this very expensive horse farm to you and to manage and to control, did he not? Mark never turned over anything to me entirely. Either he or his children had something to say about everything. Drawing your attention the first time you met Toby Wheelwright, didn't you tell him, and I again quote, you've had your father long enough, now he and his money are mine. I didn't mention money. I didn't care about money. I just wanted to get along with those kids. Really? Didn't you brag uh, to Toby Wheelwright that you had sold uh, the gifts that his father, your husband, had given you for $50,000? Uh... Yes, yes. I told him that I had sold those things and that I had given the money to charity. And the simple fact of the matter is that it was your avaricious nature that caused you to pressure him to change the premarital agreement in an attempt to convert all of his assets into part of the marital estate, right? I just wanted to be something a little more than a business yes, expense yes. to Mark. No further questions. Mrs. Wheelwright, prior to your marriage, did you disclose this relationship with Mr. Uh, Lantier to your husband? No, no, I didn't, Your Honor. I didn't think it was necessary. You may step down. Thank you. While Marsha Wheelwright leaves the stand, we have time for a break. I'm Saul Fessman, president of Queen City Home Healthcare. I'd like to tell you about a medical product that is very effective and may be at no cost to you. This is the seat lift chair that is also a recliner. It is being used by thousands of people who suffer from severe arthritis as a form of treatment in their homes. Best of all, if you qualify, you could receive this chair at no cost. Here's how. You must have a qualifying condition such as severe arthritis or other diseases, which makes the chair a medically necessary treatment you must be enrolled in Medicare Part B and have a Medicare co-insurance policy, which covers the Medicare deductible and co-payment. Many people suffer from arthritis and cannot get up from a seated position. This chair will give them the freedom to get around and help them avoid falls and injuries. So if you're a Medicare recipient and you meet the previous conditions, then you can get this recline and lift chair delivered to your door at no cost. Call 1-800-544-3500, toll free. 1-800-544-3500. Guess what, Uncle Roy? What? Hunt's ketchup is the funnest ketchup in the land. How do you know? A little mouse told me. Mickey! Hey, hey, Mickey. Minnie! Donald! Donald. Don't be Minnie! <laughs> Hunt's ketchup squeezes out so thick and tastes so good, it's unbeatable. No wonder Hunt's is the official ketchup of Disneyland and Walt Disney World. Hunt's ketchup, it's the perfect taste for the perfect place. Of all the ideas cooked up to make life easier in the kitchen, there's one simple idea nobody has improved on. And now there's another. Reynolds Wrap and Reynolds Plastic Wrap. Make it right, right from the start. What you start with makes a big difference in what you end up with. Start with Reynolds Wrap. Make it right. 
right from the start. KSD. Washington. 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 We return now to divorce court. About to testify in behalf of Marsha Wheelwright is Nobert Lantier. All right, Ms. Norton, let's continue. Mr. Lantier, how are you acquainted with the defendant, Marsha Wheelwright? When I opened my first design house in Paris, my first employee was Marsha, uh, Madame Wheelwright. As she has said, we became very good friends. I will be forever grateful to her because she helped me so much during the wedding of my daughter. I am a grandfather because of her help. Did you spend any time with Mr. and Mrs. Wheelwright? Uh, yes, uh, we made arrangements one day to meet at Notre Dame. Uh, on my way to the cathedral, I see in a cafe Monsieur Wheelwright. He is with uh, this uh, Madame Warwick. I meet Marsha at the cathedral. He arrives alone. We tour for an hour. We come outside the cathedral. Voila, Madame Warwick. He says, Doris, isn't this amazing? I have not seen you for six months. What are you doing here? He is such a liar. Did you ever see evidence that the two of them were romantically involved? Unfortunately, yes. Uh, one day, Marsha and I were going to take a tour of the French countryside, but we had to return to town because she took the wrong purse. I took her hotel key, went up to the room, I opened the bedroom door. Voila! Monsieur Wheelwright, totally nude, no clothes. And with him, Madame Warwick, also no clothes. I must tell you, Your Honor, I was shocked. Nothing further, Your Honor. Cross-examination. <clears throat> Mr. Lantier, isn't the fact that uh, you and Mrs. Wheelwright recently started a new business with the $50,000 that she obtained from selling her husband's gifts? I'm sorry, I do not understand what you can be meaning. What I mean is this, very simply. Didn't Mrs. Wheelwright give you $50,000 to start this new business? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Uh, all of, uh, no, all of my monies were from uh, Parisian I investors. She did not give me one franc. Come on, Mr. Lantier. This new business is just the payoff of your lover's plot to bilk the Wheelwright estate, is it not? I assure you, there is no plot. We are friends, old friends. These accusations, they are disgusting. No further questions, Your Honor. You may step down. Anything further from the defendant? Defendant rests. Mr. McNic McNicholas, let me hear your closing argument. Your Honor, the plaintiff here has sustained its burden of proof. We're entitled to a divorce on the grounds requested, namely physical and mental cruelty. We're also entitled to all of the marital estate pursuant to the marital agreement. That is, the house, the horse ranch, and all the furnishings worth $4,500,000. And as my client says, the defendant wife is not entitled to one dime in support. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Norlin? Yes, Mr. Wheelwright claims that Marsha willingly signed the premarital agreement. Well, then we must conclude that he also willingly signed the amendment. And if Norbert Lanthier is Marsha's lover, why didn't they sue on grounds of adultery? Why? Because they're not lovers. And uh, she asked for a degree of di divorce based on adultery and mental cruelty, and we seek the property settlement as prayed. Thank you, counsel. While Judge Keen reaches his decision, we have time for a break. It's the big guy. Hello, sir. The budget revisions? Yes, sir. Did I send you the Dane proposal? Yes, sir, it's in the mail. You should get it tomorrow. Well, thank you, sir. Without secretaries, business would go out of business. We know because we train the best. We're Griffin College. Call us at any of our three convenient locations. Hi, tell the folks about our low rent-to-own rates on new TVs, yeah. VCRs, yeah. appliances, yeah. and stereos and furniture. Okay. But don't get carried away. Who, me? Friends, take a look at the regular rental rate on this brand new color TV. <laughs> That's what we think of the regular rental rate here at Primetime Rental. Hi. Here's our manager. He wants to raise our rates. Stop. That's what we think of our manager here at Primetime Rentals, where you can rent with an option to buy. With no credit needed. <clears throat> Call the Primetime Rentals nearest you right now, today. For millions of people, this is a modern instrument of torture. It forces them to confront a staggering array of choices every day. They find themselves overwhelmed, unable to resist impulses, out of control. Instead of being served by this instrument, they're imprisoned by it. Call the Eating Disorders Program for anorexia, bulimia, or obesity. There is a way out. We'll be back with Judge Keene's decision following these messages. 
Sometimes even Pat Riley's stomach can lose its cool. That's what he reaches for, Rolaids. Nothing works better for acid indigestion. So Pat's free to let his emotions really show. Not bad. Relief. You know how to spell it. Hemorrhoids. They hurt, burn, and swell. And more doctors recommend Anusol to relieve the hurting than all other hemorrhoid medicines combined. Anusol is the word to remember for relief. There are thousands of well-paying jobs for truck drivers. And with just eight weeks of concentrated training at commercial driver training, you can qualify for a first-rate job. For 25 years, commercial driver training has provided thousands of professional drivers to the trucking industry with a job placement success rate of over 90%. It's important to me to get the feel of driving a big rig. Call 1-800-228-0961 right now and ask for enrollment information. It could be the most important call of your life. We return now to divorce court where Judge Keene is about to render his decision. This jurisdiction adopted the Uniform Pre-Marital Agreement Act prior to the effective date of the Wheelwright contract. With that uh, legislative approval, came a rash of marital contracts covering subjects all the way from weight loss to closet space allocation, limited in scope only to lawyer imagination. The Wheelwright contract is a well-written, meticulous document that clearly spells out the responsibilities and obligations of the parties. Both parties agreed to it, both parties signed it, and both parties are bound by it. Since I have concluded that the marriage is over, having run its course in two and a half years, it is my duty to interpret the terms of that premarital agreement in the context of the testimony that I've heard during the course of this hearing. I have to resolve the credibility gap which exists between the testimony of Mr. Wheelwright and his son, and the, on one hand, and the testimony of Mrs. Wheelwright and her Paris live-in husband, Mr. Uh, Lantier on the other. I find in favor of Mr. Wheelwright. Mrs. Wheelwright did not prove to my satisfaction adultery. I uh, did not believe the testimony of Mr. Lantier when it came to the $50,000, his viewing this alleged adultery, or his prior or subsequent uh, contact and relationship with Mrs. Wheelwright. Voila. I order a judgment of divorce entered in this case for Mr. Wheelwright on his complaint, grounds mental cruelty. Mrs. Wheelwright violated the terms of the premarital agreement by her failure of disclosure of her prior relationship with Mr. Lantier. Therefore, the property will remain the separate property of Mr. Wheelwright. However, the equities here call for spousal support of $5,000 a month for the next 24 months. This court stands in recess. Divorce Court is a dramatization based on cases and issues raised in the family courts of this nation. None of the participants knows the outcome of the case before hearing Judge Keene's decision. The jurisdiction is a combination of laws of all 50 states, therefore the laws of your community may differ. The cases are argued by attorneys and presided over by Judge William Keene, who served on the Superior Court of California for 18 years. Tune in today at noon for the incredible true story of a doctor who got away with murder. Farrah Fawcett and Sam Elliott star in Murder in Texas. But first, stay tuned for The Judge, next on KST Washington. At Trent Colleges, the teachers and administration are really there for you. The skills Trent Colleges gave me are paying off right now, and they're going to be paying off five years down the road also. 